Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we are going to swatch out these Ecoline liquid watercolors. So uh, I did show these in my September haul and as promised, I'm going to swatch them on camera. So they come in these cool little plastic trays. I'll probably keep the trays for now, but who knows when my art studio is done, then I'll, I might change my mind. But um, this is liquid watercolor. Now, I did a lot of research on these before grabbing them up, and I have one bottle from an art subscription box. They act more like a, an ink than a watercolor, and by that I mean they don't really lift back up um, per se. So it'll be kind of interesting to play around with these, but I thought, you know, it'd be fun to swatch them and then we'll go from there. So I just used one of my waffle flower stamps. Um, I don't have it next to me and stamped it out. I'm not going to do the mass tone. I'm just going to do the gradient here, but yeah, I'm just going to kind of go in the order they were in the trays because I don't know how they'll actually look. Um, let me move this out of the way. I do have my little Medine glass palette. I think I have, I should have enough spots for 10 colors. So yeah, here's the Ecoline. They're in glass bottles. So, um, I, at first I thought they were plastic, but nope, they're glass. <laughs> and they got the little lid. And then it's got a glass dropper. So this part here is glass as well. So like, holy moly, these things are going to be <laughs> not kid friendly or possibly not even adult friendly. So I'm just going to drop like a tiny amount because I'm just swatching. And even that was way too much. Um, I really only need like a droplet. And I'm going to grab it with like a damp brush while these lids are on crazy tight. Um, so let's do one droplet. Oh, the jets are out. Their beacon went off that I was recording. So yeah, I think one drop will be fine. I just don't know if that droplet, how quickly these dry. <laughs> so that's the thing. I'm like, ah, well, you know, what? I should kind of shake these a little. Not that I see any separation. That's why I say they remind me more of an ink. Oh, goodness. Listen to the beautiful jets while I do this. Okay, so we'll swatch the first tray and then we'll move on. Um, but yeah, normally with liquid watercolors, you'll see separation. You kind of have to mix them together, uh, you know, like ink or whatever sediment is at the bottom. But this one, like, there is nothing. And let's see. I was trying to see if they had the pigment numbers. Yeah, I'm not seeing any pigment. Oh, they have the names right here. I was writing just the numbers down, but it looks like they do have the names it's off to the side, so I'll have to add those later. But yeah, I don't see any pigment numbers, so that's why I'm kind of thinking um, they're more, they're gonna perform more like ink. All right. Got the morning sun coming through. Um, let me get my cloth. Tap off my brush. I'm gonna try my new black silver, or what's it called? Silver black velvet <laughs> um, watercolor brush. And see how it works out. So this is 507, which is, um, I'll look at the name in a second. Just wanna get some what I'm going to do is grab some water on my brush at the end and just kind of lighten it up. Ooh, that does hold a lot of water. So what color was this? Ultramarine violet. Okay. I need to get the... I accidentally got the... This part of my brush, you want to always dry that off because it'll drip down. All right. I need to add water a little sooner. I'm going to drag it to there, get some water on my brush, and then drag it out. Because I want to see how it drags out. Not bad. I mean, the color is really pretty. All right, let's see what the next one is. Probably should make sure I'm on camera, huh? <laughs> 
I've got this sun at morning sun in my eyes and I'm sure you can kind of see it like up against the backdrop here. Put a little water on my brush and drag that one out. Very vibrant. Um, yeah, I have limited recording time. Do we have two oranges? This is that was vermilion. The next one is an orange, because they're doing construction. You know, in my basement, it gets so loud. Um, yesterday they were breaking up concrete. Like it was really loud, and I was like, oh my gosh, what are they doing down there? <laughs> and I went and looked this morning, and there was um, all the broken up concrete. So I was like, oh. We're on to that part of the project. They have to tear up the concrete to um, move some pipes. Where the builder put the pipes for the bathroom was not, not a good place. <clears throat> it's not even like up against the wall. <laughs> so, so our contractor is having to break up con uh, concrete and move them. So, all right, next tray. Oh man, that morning sun is bright. These colors are bright, speaking of bright. All right, let's dot these on here. Let's try to get one drop so I don't waste it. I mean, these are gonna, like a little bit is gonna go a long way with these, that's for sure. Oh, weird, this, I can already tell. I mean, cause you, you know, just one little droplet. I don't know if it's going to end up staining my palette. I normally put this in the dishwasher, but um, I've been... Oh, this is black. Is this black? No, this is gray. Yeah, I normally put this in the dishwasher when I'm done with watercolor, but after this, i got to swatch my Daniel Smith. <laughs> so I'm going to have to actually wash this out. Can't be lazy. And that black is... Like, just straight up. I'm terrified to accidentally spill on my... <laughs> okay. So, uh, 578. I'm grab my damp brush again. Ooh, this is a nice pretty blue in my on-screen. I can't see anything with that morning sun right in my eyes. <laughs> and hopefully it's not totally killing the video quality. In fact... I'm going to close the curtain. There we go. Okay. <sighs> Wanted to make sure you guys could see. I was thinking if I can't see, you guys probably can't see. So now I gotta remember where I left off. <laughs> I'm digging this brush though. It holds a lot of water. Um, it came highly recommended to me. So I grabbed a number eight round off a of Blick, and yeah, I'm liking this. All right, I like how fat it is, but it has like this tip, and it holds water really well. I got a little bit too much water on my brush for that one. I haven't done watercolor in a while. <laughs> I feel out of practice or something. Like, what am I doing? How do I do this again? Okay, this is the gray. Gray lightens up really well. All right, let's see the black. Oh my gosh, it does look like ink in my palette. Look at that. That is, holy moly, that is some black. Let's see if it'll... You can still pick it up. Okay, I want to test it. So the purple up here is dry. I got my wet brush. I'm going to try and lift the purple. So it is reactivating and moving, but not a ton. Like with normal watercolor, I would get a line in there. So it definitely will stain your paper, I would say. <clears throat> See how the pink if the pink will come up. It reactivates, but the line is just barely there. Let's try it on the orange. These are some bright colors, holy cow. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's 
lifting sort of probably lift better if it was wet but I'm wondering okay so if they're lifting like that when you go to layer you'll just have to be really careful they're not lifting as much as a watercolor let's try this blue and see Ooh, that one came up really well look at that one So got the green. It'll be interesting to see how these play around because they are still reactivating and moving. I mean, see, look at that one. And these colors are very bright. Nope, oh, that gray is not moving at all. <laughs> <laughs> that gray is, come on, no, that gray is there. And the black, when it dries, is more of like a sepia, almost, or like a espresso. Black lifts up. Let's see, I've got a little bit there. So some of my droplets have already dried in the little palette. Let me see if I have a scratch of watercolor paper. Just a little scratch piece. So yeah, these are the colors. Very bright and vibrant. But let's see what they do if we do some mixing. I'll see if some of these reactivate too. Because I have oops, this blue. Yep, it reactivates when it dries on your palette. So that's good. That means I'll be able to wash it out. <laughs> uh, Alright, so let's this is called a mixing set, by the way. Like, that's what it's called, the Ecoline mixing set. Um, so let's grab some of the purple-ish. And let's add some of the... Oops, let me get it on there for you guys. Let's add some of that blue in there. I might have to add... That's going to end up mixing in here. I just kind of want to play around with them and see how they mix. Let's get this yellow. Because they're so liquidy. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> um, because they're so liquidy, I almost feel like it's going to be easier to just, you know, do droplets of the colors you want to mix. I mean, definitely get a good 50-50 mix. As long as you control your drops. So that's one drop green, one drop of the yellow color. Let me get my brush cleaned off here. I just want to see how that... Huh. Oops, I lost a bristle. Um, That green, the yellow, one drop of that uh, yellow really didn't change the green much from what it was originally. Yeah, these little droplets are kind of a pain. <clears throat> Let's see if I can mix. Um, let's get what's this color called sky blue. Just want to play around with it. Let's add some gray to it. Ooh, this will be... I'm going to try and pull the gray off the palette. I'm afraid if I do a 50-50. Eh, maybe not. Let's just add a gray droplet and see what we get. Oh, these colors really stick to your brush, unlike watercolor. They don't rinse off as well. I'm definitely <laughs> noticing that. Um, like, look at my, my towel here. So... Like with watercolors, but usually when I'm using this paint puck, they come off the bristles really well, but they're really sticking. So I mixed in some gray just because I wanted to see if we could darken up this sky blue. 
I mean, that's the sky blue, and that's it now. So not much change, but I do have a lot of water on my brush. Yeah, I'm going to need more. Yeah, like if I rinse it off in the paint puck, got to do extra rinsing. Otherwise, all right, let's try making, let's see if the black... I'm going to mix some black in with the purple, too. Let's see what we get. Because <clears throat> the gray didn't really touch that blue much. So let's see what the black does. The black, though, when it dries, is more of like a brown color. Ooh. But it is mixing and making a really pretty blue. Look at that blue. Oh, my goodness. That's luscious. Let's see oh my gosh that color is gorgeous <laughs> I need to not forget that that looks beautiful so that's just one drop of the black one drop of the blue and oh my gosh look at that blue that is beautiful all right I just mixed some black with a purple ooh I mean, a really nice color. I'm liking that one. Don't like that a bristle came off in there. I mean, it's a new brush. They shed sometimes. But still, <laughs> these aren't cheap, so I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay, now that it's dried, that light blue, that's interesting. Because that's the one with the gray mixed in, and it lightened it even more. Normally I use gray to darken my colors, but I could see, because this is such a light gray now that it's dry, I could see how it lightened it up. Now you can buy a white open stock um, somewhere. It's not readily available. Let's see what a little bit of gray does to that one then. And... Let's add some gray to that purple. I did two drops of gray. Um, I've been trying to find them open stock in the U.S. So they don't have them at Blick open stock. Yeah, this is going to be an ugly color, I think. <laughs> um, I haven't checked Jerry's and stuff, though. Actually, it came out sagey. It's not bad. And these colors are bright. They are like highlighter ink. Okay, so this is the purple with two drops of gray. And the reason I did two drops is because I had a lot of purple there. So that's it with the black. That's it with the gray. It's not too bad. Oh, look at that blue when it dries. Um, it's... I'm going to get it back on frame. So that blue when it dries, it... It's almost like a blue-green now. Yeah, it definitely has a green undertone. What was that blue color? I wish they had the pigments, but... Yeah, hmm, interesting. I mean, this set is called the Mixing Set. Make some brown. One of my favorite things is to just mix colors. Um, not so much with these liquid ones, though. <laughs> Let's add a little of the pink into the purple there. I don't find these liquid ones as satisfying to mix as I would regular watercolors. That color's really pretty, though. Now that's been added into our pur No, this is just um, purple and black up here. Yeah, this is purple and gray. I'm waiting for that one to dry to see how it ends up looking. Now these do dry. <clears throat> I'm noticing, look at the lines you get. So they definitely act like an ink. See that dark line around it? And I'm noticing it on my swatch chart too, like where they've completely dried. So that's interesting how they act. They don't act like a watercolor, they, like 
in the traditional sense. But yeah, they're not bad. Hmm, well, all right, so that is the Ecoline 10 mixing set is what it's called. Um, not shabby, you know, that brown actually is pretty nice. It's got like a bronzish green gold kind of color going on. That purple actually turned out pretty good. Yeah, I'll have to definitely play around with it. Um, <clears throat> but they definitely act more like an ink. I can say that. Um, they do seem to lift, though. Right, you know, one, one thing I'll try real quick is... Um, okay, this purple's dry. So I wanted to go back over it with another purple. What's going to happen? Like, you know, if I wanted to layer... Yeah, look at that. That line, that harsh <laughs> line. Oh my gosh, that line is, that's not going anywhere. So even though this reactivates, that line is, hello. And this is good watercolor paper because the paper does matter. Um, paper can really come back to bite you. So yeah, that, that harsh line it creates, you would just want to really water these down, I would say, and not have a lot of water on your brush though. But, yeah, I mean, I'll have to play around with these and do a review down the road after I do uh, to better kind of, you know, tell you what I think of them. But overall, the color range isn't bad. They're very bright, though. Like, um, now there's 60 total colors you can buy. That's why I'm trying to look for the open stock to see. I don't, I don't think this is appropriately named, though. I, I wouldn't call this a mixing set. Um... Because, I mean, you, we don't have, we got a sky blue, you know, we don't have an actual red, um, you know, so we don't have the, the primary colors going on. So that, that kind of concerns me that they call this a mixing set. Um, there's, you know, we, there's such bright colors too. Like I said, it kind of is like highlighter ink. I mean, look at the green and orange and yellow. They're like very highlighter-ish. Um, so those kind of concern me too. I, I just wouldn't call this a mixing set. These colors aren't very mixable. Um, I, they obviously are mixable. I mean, but in the sense that they call this a mixing set, you would expect to at least have the primary colors in there not an orange red um and you know not such bright colors more neutral something you can mix up and i i would have liked to see a white because if they're calling this a mixing set they really should include a white now the gray almost acts like a white lightening things up for us and kind of giving it like a pastelish tone see both of these colors you have that pastel look but still I don't know I think the name's kind of misleading because I was expecting these colors to be something I could really like mix and play around with but they're neon-ish <laughs> so um I'll definitely have to water them down and stuff but yeah I'll play around with them and do an official review but that's just my first impressions um I've always wanted to do liquid watercolors because I feel like it would be so much easier than traditional ones you know don't even have to add water but i almost find myself missing having the control over the liquid in my um palette so <laughs> it's like can't ever ha be happy apparently um but yeah i think these are interesting final results will have to come later after i play with them but let me know if you have the Ecoline watercolors, whether it's this mixing set or just some random open stock and what you think of them. And until next time, guys, take care.